Turex fans. So I want to put out a video today that talks about my 2017 Turex 4 and do a little bit of a walk around. I've had multiple questions on Facebook. We've had some on Instagram. We've got some on our YouTube channel, Deranged Off Road. If you haven't liked and subscribed that channel, make sure that you do so now at this time. And then... This is my machine. Um, my other buddy has the Can-Am Defender and that would be Dave. And then Joe has the Polaris 900 four-seater that he just got over Christmas. Check out that video on YouTube, it's awesome. But basically today we just want to do a walk around. I want to show you basically where to spend your money and maybe, you know, not where to spend it or answer some of those questions you have going on. One of the main questions I see on Facebook now is basically where it's talking about the wheel and tire setup and will it rub. So during my walk around, we're going to kind of show you that a little bit and you guys can see from there kind of where I'm sitting on my tire and wheel package, also with my high lifter lift, a few of the other accessories I put on the do's and don'ts a little bit. Is it worth spending 800 bucks on a light bar? Is it not? How should it look when you wire it? To me, I'm picky. My friends know I'm picky. I know I'm picky. It's all good. As you can tell, my machine's pretty much spotless. I'm running 1,300 miles on this now at this time. So I just, that's just who I am. But basically, I want you guys to start commenting, asking us questions about what we can do to help answer um, anything you have as far as it goes to, to, to the Turex or if you have other questions that deal with the other UTVs that my buddies have. Whatever it is, we wanna be here to talk about it in a reality type of way where we can just kinda of give you honest feedback. Um, in today's market, there's so many opinions out there. Uh, you got opinions that are very strong-willed towards different machines. That is what it is. That's not what Deranged Off-Road is all about. We're all about all UTVs. It's all about getting out with your family, your friends, having a good time, and that's what matters. So here's a couple quick uh, pictures and maybe a couple short clips of the Turex getting some work done out on the trails. And after that, then we'll do the walk around. So stay tuned, stay with us all the way through the end of the end of this video and make sure that you hit like and subscribe. So here we go with Deranged Off-Road and the Turex 4 2017. So the first thing is the light bar. I have a light bar on this that really cost me pretty much hardly anything. So I think this one was close to 40 bucks. So it's not a name brand light bar. Um, those light bars are awesome light bars. I will never dog on a light bar like that. But they're like six, 800 bucks. So it all depends on what you want to put on your machine. This one on this machine has already been on for just over a year, no issues. It comes right on, no problems at all. There's your flick. It puts out amazing light, amazing light. And so far it's held up. It doesn't even, it hasn't been leaking water into it. No issues, I've had some rocks, branches hit it, it hasn't broken. I've got a year out of it, okay? Just over a year, 40 bucks for a year. If I wanted to, each year, I can sit here and replace this for a brand new one, or maybe a little bit different style and still spend around 40, 50 bucks. That would be my choice, just plug it back in. I got all the wires sitting right there. So for me, this is a win-win. On the price, um, so far the durability, the light factor, it's, it's awesome. So this is a win-win for me. Some of you guys are name brand guys. That is completely cool with me. I think that's, there's a place for it. It's just, it's just not my thing to spend 800 bucks on a light bar. I already have the money in the machine. Wanted to save some money there. So this is the first, first quick review. Light bar, 40 bucks. I'll try to add some links down at the bottom that you guys can check out different ones to get an idea. But this one so far is a win-win. All right, number two. So this is the tire and wheel package that I put on this machine. The M33 clutch, 14 inch rims sitting on Tusk Terabytes, DOT approved, 28 by 10 by 14. 
They're sitting awesome. I have 10 inch all the way around my machine now. So they're not different sizes. They work great, DLT approved, make a huge improvement. But the question is, do they rub and how big can I go? I have two inch spacers on this. So you need to check this out. I have it right here so you can check this out. So take a look right in there. And there is my clearance. What do I have? A little over a finger. I do not have any issues with it rubbing. On, on the rock trail I went on, that was pretty aggressive. Never had any, any issues with it rubbing, but it is close. So depending on your offset, you definitely need the spacers, but running 28s is pretty much a safe bet. Going to 30s, I don't know. I'm sure there's options with that. You guys can comment below and let us know, but there's the setup. And sweet tires, quick review on these tires, going down the dirt roads, going down the street roads, they are way more durable, way more traction grabbing, and they drive straight, they don't wobble, they don't move around like your old original tires that come with it. The big horns, they are awesome. And they're, they're set up for a great price. Check out Rocky Mountain ATV, and they can mail you this whole entire package set up, ready to go to your door within a few days, and you are set. So one more picture of that clearance. All right, so remember real quick, 28s by 10 by 14 with the clutch M33 rim. All right, the big number three. So I have the Tusk set up for the street legal kit. I've got a light that I installed there for the blinker. Installed one here. Some people put two or three on. I just put one. And make sure that you put them up in the right location. Sometimes this bumper here can get in the way and you can't see them as well, but at night, they're still super bright, they're good to go, but I, I chose to put mine up a little bit higher right there. Also got the mirrors. Now I bought these actually from Cherubaca, whatever, off-road. I have a hard time saying it, awesome company. Um, easy, easy to order from, they're like 20 something dollars. They work for me, had no issues, they've been on four or five months. And on the back, and the rear blinker, rear blinker, oh yeah, let me back up, the license plate and also the LED light, it's pretty bright, I mounted it right there on the Tusk box, by the way, the Tusk uh, cargo box, Rocky Mountain ATV, I tried all different type of setups on this, but honestly, this is like the best box ever, um, if you guys give me a little bit of time, I'll actually do a review on that and, and post that up on our YouTube channel. So you can see what I did to it to actually make it a little bit more waterproof and seal out the dust. But awesome cargo box. And then also inside here, some light. I've got my horn and I've got my blinker set up. So everything looks nice, ready to go, works great, no issues. I've had it on four or five months now. All right, number four. So the high lifter lift. So this is a two inch bracket lift. You can see your brackets there. I did put the bolt in on the bottom. I've been running this five, 600 miles now, no issues. Remember though, I ran the two inch spacers with it all the way around, all four, all four wheels. But overall, no issues. The ride's been fine. Adjusted my suspension a little bit, made it a little bit softer, perfect. No issues at all. Gave me tons of clearance for those rocky trails that we ride up at Duck Creek Village. Awesome place, you guys check it out. Also, any of the trails we ride here in Warner Valley or wherever I go. Made a huge difference, made a huge difference on the trail, the maze. Um, check that out on our YouTube video too, with this Turex going over the maze. Um, there was another stock Turex there that was uh, grinding the rocks a whole lot more than I was. So this made a huge difference also with the tire and wheel package. It made a big time difference. You have any questions on the high lift or lift, anything you guys got, I don't care what bracket lift you go with. Some I think might be better or not, I don't know. The point is the bracket lift made a huge difference for the cost. You're talking like 130, 150 bucks, somewhere around there, well worth the money. All right, number five, the bump seat. I put this bump seat in for my two-year-old daughter. <coughs> Excuse me, she is doing awesome in it. So it's got the harnesses, everything came with it. You just have to remember when you install this bump seat, you will lose one of your cup holders. So I've got a solution for that. I added more cup holders, pretty simple fix. They're like 10, 12 bucks, whatever, a pair. So you guys need to check these out. They're awesome. A little bit insulated. They have a pull system here to tighten them down for your water bottle. 
key holder, all that kind of stuff. They just strap onto your bars. They have gone exactly nowhere. They've had bigger water bottles in them. Um, as you guys know, these holders up front hold about, let's see, nothing um, besides a water bottle or, or maybe a, a can, and that's about it. So I actually mounted, if you guys are interested, mount these ones lower because you can reach, reach them better at the front seat. But in the rear seat, I went higher um, because of the options here weren't as great, but higher actually works really well and it, and it just works and my kids are able to use them up there. But awesome, cheap product, check them out. I'll try to provide a link below as well. And then in part of this package, I also added the Tusk um, headlights. Uh, basically, let me show you this here. So it just straps on, Rocky Mountain ATV. Again, supplied that, excellent price. Went right on. It's a must have, but I am looking at other options to do a hardwired setup um, in this UTV. I think it's the way to go. But this has been a great option for right now. Puts out a lot of uh, light at night. So check that out. Stereo system. For me, guys, it's all about affordability. I didn't need anything crazy. This is a Bluetooth system. I actually ran it right there, my dash here, the wire. And this is actually just Velcro that's holding this on. I can easily remove all this, and a tiny little hole would be here, and that's it. But it works great. It was about 130, 140 bucks. It's made by Boss, they call it. Um, it's got built-in amps, as you can see here in the speakers. And then there's another one there. It's just a two-speaker system. But for me, it was way to go. I just didn't want to spend tons of money on a stereo system. This works just fine for what we do with it. And I love it, so there you go. All right, pod lights in the rear. I mounted mine up here. They produce tremendous amount of light downwards behind you, so if you're backing up in reverse, or if you're camping, you need to work on something in the, in the rear or getting in the cargo box, you can flip them on. They produce tons of light. And guess what? These two cube lights I found, 18 bucks. I'm not promising the same price for you guys because everything changes. I get that on eBay or Amazon. I'll provide the links. They've been working over a year as well. I can change them out for 18 bucks, right? No big deal for me. Awesome product. Seven, I already showed you my stereo, but I want to show you guys my switches. So I ran rocker switches with relays for all my lights. If I come over here, I did blue. They actually light up just like the ones that come on um, the razor themselves already. I'm picky like that. And you can light them all up. Also, I ran them not on the ignition. That way I can turn them on if the, if the unit's just parked or turn them off. But if you turn on the ignition, you'll also see this come on, it's a voltmeter, but also I ran it so I have USB um, charging set up for that, and it's pretty cool. So check that out. That's just the way I like to wire things. I like how they look. They're nice, stock looking, clean. That's the key. And in behind the panel, they're all set up really nice and wired as well. Heat shrink, all that kind of stuff, looking good. All right, another thing I wanna show you, this is the Tusk rear view mirror. This rear view mirror was, was pretty inexpensive. Bought it at Rocky Mountain ATV as well. The pro is it was a good price and it's held up well. I, I don't know if I'm completely sold on this mirror. Um, it's kind of big, kind of bulky. You can see how it mounts up. It's cool, it works. You guys kind of make a decision. It's, it's great for the price, can't beat that. But I don't know if I'm completely sold on this one. So there might be different options out there. If you guys have other options, hit me up in the comments. Let me know, give me some opinions on that. And then the last couple things is, on our YouTube channel, I supplied a video showing you guys how to do the heat shield and also the sound detonator. This is a mid-engine machine. You're gonna get noise no matter what. If you wear a helmet, of course, it's 10 times better, but you're just gonna have noise. It helped with that a little bit, not tons. The heat shield, though, made a huge improvement. My kids are happy now. They said it's way, way cooler. I've ridden it quite a few miles since I put that on. I'm in the desert area. We hit, you know, 110, 115 degrees in the middle of the summer. We try to head to the, uh, head to the hills and go over there to Duck Creek Village and different places um, where it's cooler during that time. And then we try to ride around here during the winter time. Even right now in December, sometime um, in January, we can sit here at 65 degree weather. We can be at 21 degree weather. 
But when the day's nice, we jump in the Turex, we jump in the other machines with my buddies with the range and we take off. So that's what it's all about. So the family enjoys it. Um, the heat shield made a huge difference. If you guys haven't seen that, go to the YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. But watch that video. Um, it gives you guys some in-depth in detail of what I used and how I put it on and, and where I put it. If you guys have questions with that, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. Hit me up with Deranged Off-Road on Facebook. Or hit us on the comment logs in, on YouTube. So, basically, I have that. And then also, I have the mats. So on YouTube as well, check out that video. I made these homemade mats. They're awesome. They're thick. They don't move. And if you know on your floorboards, you guys have little holes in your treks. And you get tons of dust coming up through those holes when you're riding down the um, trails or wherever you go that's really, really dusty. This will actually help prevent that. So the floor mats alone, that's kind of what I got them for. Also a little bit with the sound, but they made a huge difference with dust. You're always gonna have dust, but this made a huge difference. So check that out. All right, last but not least, the windshield. So I see tons of guys running full windshields. That's completely cool. I love them. Um, but I personally decided to go with the half windshield and I went with the tinted, um, built-in tent type windshield, so I didn't have that cheap stuff on my windshield. It was actually tinted Pexi glass. And the reason I went with that is not anything but seriously looks, um, with having the burnt orange color and all the black rims and tires. That's why I went with this windshield. But for me, the dynamics of this windshield works great. The wind comes up and comes right underneath here and right over our heads makes a huge difference. But the reason I went with this is because this machine gets hot. So especially since we ride in a lot of warmer weather down here in Southern Utah, this will help blow that hot air right out the back. So I just, that's what I went with. If, you know, we're gonna get dusty regardless. I didn't worry about that. I've heard all different reviews and opinions about dust and all that kind of stuff. You're gonna get dusty in the UTV, riding out on dirt roads and all those kind of places. But for me, it was mainly to try to get rid of some of that heat that comes from the cab in the summertime, and, and it works great, it helps. Okay, so that's why I went with the short windshield on this machine. And here's a little trick for you guys. These have great clamps, they're all just Velcro, you pull them tight. But after you do that, you notice this, you know, when you're riding, this machine will start working its way up. So in order to fix that, a little bit of leftover weather stripping from here down, stuck on there, clamped it down. And now you had no rattle, so you get no noise out of this windshield, and it absolutely doesn't move. So, and then I also mounted a cup holder right below it here on both sides in the front, like I showed you before. But that is a cheap, cheap little tip and trick. So you have no noise coming from your windshield and no movement. And I cut it off a roll of weather strips, so maybe each piece here is two cents. It made all the difference. So check that out. This is Garrett, Dave, and Joe with the Ranged Off-Road. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Also, please leave comments below. Tell us what you like about these products or what you don't like, what you've used or what you haven't used. Any opinions, please let us know what you think. Check out our other videos also on YouTube. Check out our Facebook page, our Instagram page, and get in contact if you have any type of questions that we can help you answer. Thanks for watching.